Starting with some Jarrah and Blackwood boards, we first need to machine them to be flat and true. It turns out that the two Blackwood boards that I used for this project were sequence cut, so I was able to get a double book match for the top panel. It is very critical to joint the edges to be straight so that you make a good solid glue bond later. I am using urea formaldehyde as it gives a good solid bond with zero creep. Now that I have my five panels glued up, I have to cut them to a common length and a common width, except for the bottom panel which will be half inch smaller all the way around, or 12 mil smaller all the way around, just to give a bit of a reveal. Now that I have my blanks all squared up, I can use my templates to mark out where I need to cut away the bulk waste using a jigsaw, and then later on I can come through and use a router table to clean it up. It's a good idea on the top layer to knife around this cut line here so that when the jigsaw comes through it doesn't chip out on this side of the line. No tear out thanks to the knife line. I want to now shape them professionally, professionally, with a with a router. And I'll start on the top panel first. The first thing to do is I'll double side a sticky tape this down to the surface, and then I want to put a nine mil deep recess around this shape here. And what that does is it sinks the turntable unit into the surface by nine mil, and it looks looks pretty schmick. Now I'll put in a bigger flush trim bit and move over to my router table and clean up all these other areas here that are just straight through cuts. to then move on to the second panel which is made out of Jarrah and using the second template I'll double side a sticky tape this down and I will flush trim this out over onto the rat over on the router table. pins, a couple of dowels, put that there, put that there, put this on, <laughs> and now I can use this piece of Jarrah as the template to clean up this edge here on the top surface of the blackwood. But I also get to use those pins when I glue it up because when I smother this in glue and press it together they shift all over the place but those pins will lock everything into an exact position just as it is now. Beautiful. So with the first and second panels done, I can put the first panel aside because that's completely finished. I still need the second panel to act as the template for the third panel. So I'll pin those together just like I did, put, take them over to the router table, shape it, 
beautiful. Put those to the side, bring over my third template, which will be the template for the fourth layer and the fifth layer, which is actually an extra layer that my clients decided to go for this time. So I'll rinse and repeat a few times and we'll move on to the next stage. Before I go ahead and glue these panels up into one big thick solid block, I'm going to drill the mounting holes in there first, as well as a, a hole in the back to accept a IEC plug. So I'm ready to glue this thing up and I'm going to be gluing this with urea formaldehyde because it gives a rigid no creep glue line and I'll prepare my boards over here on my bench and then I'll move them over onto the clamps on a nice flat surface being my panel saw table and that's the machine flat. So after leaving this in the clamps for three days and then allowing this to sit and rest out of the clamps for a week, I've come through with the sander and cleaned up the sides to see what was going on. There was a lot of defects through the end grain so I've come back and filled these defects with epoxy. And then I scraped that epoxy smooth to get us up to where we are now. Now time to square up the edges properly and the only way I have available to do this is to use my jointer to square them up, both the long grain and the end grain I'll put over the jointer. My saw doesn't go up high enough because this is a 6 inch high block of timber now and I don't have an edge sander to do it so the jointer is the only option I have at the moment so that's the way I'm going to do it. It's not my preferred option but it works, I've done it before. The only problem with it is, is that it, I've got the urea formaldehyde glue and that is a very hard, glass hard glue which it ruins my knives.
So it's looking pretty awesome at the moment. I'm quite happy with the way this is turning out. I was a little bit unsure about the combination between the Blackwood and the Jarrah, but I think even that's working out quite nicely. It was a selection from the client himself and I was a bit unsure about it, but I think he's done well with it. So the next thing I need to do is I need to drill in a couple of 18mm holes, one here and one here, for two pickup arm cables to come out the back somewhere. Just an 18mm hole, that's all he wants. And I also need to chisel out this hole a little bit bigger to accept these, oh, I forget what these plugs are called, but it's one of those plugs. I need to chisel it out so it goes in, into there, sits in there nicely. So I'm almost there with this big block here. All I need to do is take off all of these sharp corners. I'm going to put a 5 eighths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch round over on these four corners there and on these top surfaces and the, on the bottom and the bottom and the extreme bottom, I'll put a 1 eighths, 1 eighths of an inch round over in there. I'll be putting the, the corner round overs on using my router table. I'll stand that up on edge put it up against my fence and then push it through. The problem with that is that when I do that it's likely to blow this back edge out. So I'll get myself a sacrifi sacrificial piece of timber, put it in behind there and then as I push it through that piece of timber will protect this edge, give it a bit of support, stop it from blowing out and that way it gives, it'll give me a nice crisp edge. So now using my handy dandy trimmer, I'm going to climb cut a 1 8 inch round over around this top edge here just to knock that edge off. By climb cutting, it reduces the chance to almost none that it will pick out any weak grains. So using the offcuts from the centre here, I need to make a series of circles that fit inside these holes there for the pickup arms. My client wants wants them in blackwood to match the top. Personally, I think it would be better to have them in Jarrah. So I'm going to make some in Jarrah and some in blackwood and I'll give them all to the client. He can make the decision at the end. But I'm interested to know, what do you guys think? Blackwood or Jarrah for these? The contrast or no contrast? I've got the contrast down the sides and the front. Why not bring the contrast up to the top? That's my thinking. What do you guys think? Well, thanks very much for watching guys. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learnt a few things. At least how to build a solid timber record player flint. That'd be a good thing to learn from this video, eh? Now, clearly it's not finished. I'll be putting up a second video in about a month's time after I've got this finished sanded and finished with a high gloss polyurethane. So I'll put that up into its own video because somebody asked me oh, eight, nine months ago how, how I go about finishing things. Now, I finish with all, all sorts of things, polyurethane, shellax, lacquers, anything. Whatever the customer wants, that's what they get. So, this time he wants super high gloss uh, polyurethane, so that's what he'll get. So I'll do that in another video. And let me know down in the comments below which one you prefer. The Jarrah inserts, all these lighter coloured blackwood inserts, all these darker coloured black blackwood inserts. Me personally, me personally, I think the Jarrah looks awesome. It just it just ties the whole piece together. You've got the contrasting up the sides with the blackwood Jarrah and blackwood, and then you come up the top. You've got the big massive blackwood, and then the little Jarrah inserts will give it give it a pop of colour. Looks beautiful. Anyway, until next time, like, subscribe, share, 
Show your love. Thank you very much. Adios.